how much does it cost to raise and build a home here in Australia? Emily and I are undertaking a raise and build project here in Brisbane, Australia, and we're doing it as owner builders. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the exact numbers of our estimates, the quotes we've received so far, and what we spent on the project to date. I'm also going to be breaking down a detailed list of the ins and outs covering kitchens, bathrooms, flooring, all of our materials price list is going to be broken down in this video. This is a series of our Triple Gable Queenslander. We've actually renovated this little two bedroom home over the last couple of years and there's a whole series or a playlist on the YouTube channel that you can go back and check out from day one when we started renovating this home. Now we've got our little son Asa, it's time for us to upgrade and to expand the bedrooms because two bedrooms, if we have a few more kids, is not going to be enough for us. So in a future video, I'll be sharing our house plans, which I'm very excited about, and I'll drag Emily in for that video so we can do it together. But in today's video, with my background as a chartered accountant, we're going to be diving into the numbers, which I think people really love. So we're going to be sharing what we spent. So let's not waste any time and jump into the Google Sheet. As you can see on screen here, our total estimated for our raise and build is $352,883.21. Now I am definitely hoping that we don't spend that much money, but that is our total total estimate of all the expenses involved in doing our raise and build project as owner builders with some trades through the process. Now, the way I've built this spreadsheet out is through a number of columns. We've got an order here. Okay, ignore my numbering, that's just the way I work because um, I've added in some new rows, but we're covering planning, we're covering the raise, and we're looking at the build and fit out. In column C, we cover off the suppliers, and in column D, we put a description and link to the invoices. Then we've got a column for estimates, quotes, paid to date, left to pay, and the date we've paid those bills. So far, we're in the planning phase of our raise and build project. Emily drove me to the QBCC the other day, and it took me about 10 minutes to hand in my application forms for an owner builder license. Now that's currently being assessed and we should hear back in the next 30 days about that license being approved. So in order to get that license, I had to do some asbestos training. We had to do a title search on our home. I had to complete the owner builder application, the owner builder license. And so all up that cost me $708.21 to be prepared and submit the docs for the owner builder application. We then dealt with a company called Designer Planning. Now their draftsman based in Albion on the north side of Brisbane, and we had a fantastic experience. We took our time in selecting a draftsman slash architect to work with, and these draftsmen were brilliant. Danny came out to the home, took measurements throughout the property. We drafted up some drawings and some original plans ourselves in a program called Magic Plans, and then we handed those over to Danny and went through a couple of iterations to create our dream plans. So make sure you subscribe to the channel down below to see our plans broken down and the renders, which look amazing in a future video video. As part of the plans, we also needed a site survey and that costs $2,300. The site survey essentially gave us an idea of the contours of the land and the fall from the front to the back of the property. So we have about a two meter fall which runs from the front left hand side of our property to the back right hand side in the corner. And this gives the idea for the draftsman and the engineers looking at the fall of the property and how the slab is going to be constructed. We've then engaged engineers, a town planner, and finally we'll need to engage a building approver and certifier. So at this point in time, our engineers are just getting underway and they're going to come out and visit site in a couple of days. Denise from Planning Insights, they've been awesome as well. They're helping us with our development application. When you go to do a project on a character property on a small lot here in Brisbane, Australia, you need to be wary of the overlays on that property. So the character overlay, the small lot overlay means that we have to submit a development application. So Denise has made some recommendations to our draftsman at Designer Plan to make some adjustments for our development application submission. And finally, we've got KP approvals who will be engaging as our owner builder certifiers. So these guys are private certifiers. We haven't engaged them yet, but we've got a quote of around $3,300 to go ahead with them and they'll come out to site and do some site inspections throughout the raise and build project. Now this is where the numbers get a little bit iffy and they're definitely estimates at this point. But once we get through these first planning phases, then we can go out and get detailed quotes for the raise and build. So we've got an estimate of 50K for the house raise, site cleanup, um, plumbing in the slab and reconnection of services, new slab estimate at 50k, electrical, temporary stairs. We're going to do a plungy max swimming pool, which we're very excited about. 
budgeting about 50K for that, framing, exterior cladding, internal stairs, and then M's fit out. So that's 104K doing it as owner builders. Now I've heard of quotes up to around 700K to a million dollars for these types of projects. And the suburb that we're in here in Brisbane means we won't overcapitalize on our property. There's homes up to about $2 million. So we bought our house for around 681. We spent about 50K on our internal renovation so far. And that's not waste of money because we've repainted inside, we've repainted outside, we've updated the kitchen and the bathroom. Now the kitchen's going to be gutted, but we're gonna keep the bathroom and the front room and a lot of the spaces that we've painted so far. So $352,000. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below whether you think that's a lot or a little. I'm really hoping that we'll spend something more like 250 up towards 300, but we've got a bit more buffer in there at 352, just to make sure we are realistic with what we're spending on the deal. In terms of the numbers so far, we spent $8,373 to date, and we need to pay another $10,501 to our engineers, our town planner, and our certifier. So that means we'll have spent $18,874 before we've broken ground. But this will give us a certifier, it'll give us a development application, a building approval, and an owner builder license. And then we can go out and get our quotes from our trades. Now let me show you the materials price list, which breaks down the fit out by different areas. It covers the kitchens, the bathrooms, different living spaces, master bedrooms, and so on. And it will give you an idea of how we're structuring this deal and how we're tracking all of the ins and outs on our raise and build project. So on screen, this is what Emily's created to try and track all the different products and all the different estimated price points that we're going to spend in the project. We've got sections like kitchens, kids' bathrooms, and so on. And the way this is laid out is we have tick boxes once we've actually made the purchases. We've got a description of the item. We've got a link, an estimate of the total costs, which comes out to about 104 to 106,000 K. And then the category that those items fall in. So we're looking at black butt timber flooring, for example, and we've got some options there, some decorative timber, uh, different items from the kitchen, which we're looking at doing from Ikea, and then items from every which place, Ikea, tile and bathroom shops, the whole lot across the property. So this list goes on and on in terms of itemizing the different products that we want in our project. You can see that here we've got a fair bit of the kitchen items priced out. We've got $20,000 for our kitchen and Em's created our plans in Ikea's kitchen planning tool and it actually gives you that estimate. And the 20 grand also covers the dishwasher, the fridge, the oven, cooktop, all those sorts of things are included in the 20 grand budget there. Now be aware that this price list does not include the trades or the fit off of the actual product. But as owner builders and given our experience renovating, we're going to look to save as much money as possible and do this work ourselves. So keep that in mind when you're trying to use these numbers as a reference point for yourself if you're looking to do your own renovation project. Scrolling down here, we cover sections like the kids' bathroom, the lounge room, the back deck, pool area, study, bedrooms and en-suites and so on. Now, we also have a pivot table. Now, me being a chartered accountant by trade and my background being in auditing, uh, this is the way I like to work. I use pivot tables all the time. Now, we're about 2K off in the pivot table. That's okay. This is just an estimate. So the pivot table total is coming out to about $104,710. And this summarizes the categories in each of the areas and where we're spending the most money and where we're spending the least money. So we're actually planning on spending the most money in our kitchen, which makes sense for all the cabinetry and the appliances. Then we're spending a fair bit of money on the flooring because we're planning on doing both upstairs and downstairs black butt timber flooring. And we're looking to use real timber. So that's going to be a bit of an expense and we also have some feature paneling as well. And when you use real timber, it, you know, you've got to be careful of warping and defects, but we're going to install it ourselves and try and save a bit of money there. We're then spending about 10K on miscellaneous items. A master bedroom is about 10K. Kids bathroom, en suites, pool area, uh, which will cover tiling and some furniture out there. And then finally, kids bedrooms, back deck, study, lounge room, and the hallway. 
So we're not really overcomplicating it here with the way we're tracking the numbers. We've got a master spreadsheet where we're documenting our invoices, documenting our estimates, and finally the actual money we end up spending. We've also got that detailed materials price list, which we can put the links to the physical products that we like. And then if we find substitutes, we can bring those in as well and keep track of all of the expenses on our project. The main thing with keeping track of the numbers is to try and update the invoices as soon as you get them and as soon as they paid. If you let things lapse and you're not keeping track of all of the invoices, it's going to be difficult for you to have an idea of what you've actually spent on the project. You also want to keep a bit of a buffer in there as well. We've got a budget of around that 352k, but I'm really hoping we could do the project for about 2 to 250. We're spending a little bit more money on luxuries like black butt timber flooring, some decorative paneling, and a curved wall in one of the entryways and bedrooms, and that's a bit of a surprise to show you in the house plans. And we're also spending a bit of money on the plungy max pool, uh, which is a bit of a splash and a bit of a feature for us uh, as we do our dream raise and build. Our current plan for funding this project is to do it slowly over time by managing our cash reserves, but we could also look at pulling out some debt funding if we needed to, to finish off our project. The timeline for us is going to take about 18 months. And so we're gonna to need to move out of the property, probably into M's mum's place or find a place down on the coast for a little while. So we're gonna work that out as we go, but we're planning on putting the bulk of our furniture into storage being pretty minimal for about six to 12 months as we manage the project. And then once we can get a certificate of occupancy, so once our laundry is finished off and the upstairs is finished off, then we should be able to move back in even if the other downstairs areas aren't quite finished. So what do you think of the numbers that we've shared today? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Where do you think we could save money? Where do you think we're spending too much money? And do you think the price and the estimates that we've got are reasonable? With the cost of trades and materials going up, our project costs are probably 30% higher than they were a few years ago. But that's why we're trying to save money as owner builders. And our experience renovating projects is definitely going to help us in this journey. Now, I don't claim to be uh, an expert by any means on these renovations. We're definitely learning as we go. And that's one of the most important things is that you've got that continuous improvement and that you can be teachable through the process. So I'm gonna be trying to learn from my trades, from the house raises, and I wanna do more developments in the future and potentially look at buying a motel chain or doing tiny house builds. So taking this on as owner builders for our own home is also a learning experience for myself and it's going to be exciting to learn bits and pieces about projects that I didn't otherwise understand. So leave your thoughts on the cost of our project down in the comments below. Make sure you drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and head over to purposeproperty.com.au if you're looking for a Brisbane based buyer's agent. Otherwise click this video over here and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.